जाए तुलसी देवी की जाए भक्ति देवी की जाए समवेत भक्त वृंद की जाए और Thank you very much, Maharaj, and thank you very much, dear devotees, for joining this Wednesday evening as we continue our uh, study of the second canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, with the lecture series led by His Holiness Dr. Vidya Sai Maharaj, broadcasting live from Eastern of New Jersey in Tuvalu. Um, so today's verse is Canto Two, Chapter Two, Verse Number Seven. So you can follow along. And when, if you have any questions or comments, so please feel free to raise your hand, or uh, you can type it in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Where? Um, well, Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shaminiti Namine, Namaste Sarsati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nir Vishesha Shunyavadi, Pashtata Deshatarne, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda, Sri Advaita Vedadhar Sri Rasadi Gauravati. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you all for coming. Special respects to Purusharta Prabhu, Swamik Rishi Prabhu, the Apurva and Kamalini, and any other God brothers, and to all the devotees, God brothers, God sisters. The yes, we are reading in second chapter two two seven, and there's been the idea has been expressed that one should by Sukadev Goswami one should fix one's mind on Krishna. That's the essence of the previous verse. One should render service to him, the personality of Godhead, who's situated in one's own heart. He is the goal of life. Worshiping him can bring about the end of one's material existence. Now, kastam tonadritya parama anadritya paranuchintam prate pashun asatim nama kuryat. Pashanjanam patitam vaitaranyam sukarmajan paritapan jushanam. Kastam uh, to anadrita para anuchintan rite pashun asatim nam kuriyat. Uh, who is there that would neglect anadracha, neglecting para anuchintam, the thoughts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, who else would, would neglect him and get involved in asatim nama, the impermanent world of names? Who would do that unless rite pashun, unless he's an animal? In the Vedas, it said that persons attached to the demigods, to the exclusion of the personality of Godhead, are like animals who follow the herdsmen, even though they're taken to the slaughterhouse. The materialists, like animals, don't know how they're being mis misdirected by neglecting transcendental thought of the Supreme Person. So one has to think of something but the materialists are always thinking of the demigods, thinking of material gains for benefits that are asati, 
impermanent. But the enlightened transcendentalist is not captivated by such illusory things. He's always absorbed in transcendental thought of the Supreme, either as Brahma, Paramatma, Bhagavan. In the previous chapter, one should think of the grand universal form, think of the Supreme in relationship to the material cosmic manifestation. But now uh, Sukadev Goswami has upped the game essentially by saying one should concentrate on the super soul. Intelligent people may do that. Pashan Janam Patitam Vaitaranyam Sakarma Jan Padita Pan Vushanam. The why should one do this? Uh, well, first of all, because we're fallen in the ocean of uh, material existence. And second, because we can see all around us others who are fallen in uh, Vaitarani. Vaitarani means the, the river of suffering. Hmm. So Karma John, produced by their own uh, work, Jushanam Pratitapan, overcome by sufferings which are caused by their own work. Uh, the living entities are trying to be happy by various kinds of activities. And that work for their own happiness is what causes them to be stuck in material existence and suffering. And everyone is a class A, class B, or class C prisoner suffering because of past deeds. So, but one who takes shelter of Krishna's lotus feet gets protection from the Lord and the Lord takes the devotee back to him. Any comments or questions here so far? Okay. Now, starting with the next verses, the Sukadev Goswami will begin to describe this super soul and meditation upon him. Kechit Sudehantar Hridaya Hridaya Vakashe. Kechit Sudehantar Hridaya Vakashe. Pradesha Matram Purusham Vasantam. Chatur Bhujam Kanja Ratanga. Ritanga Sankha, Shankha, Gadadharam, Taranaya Smaranti. Others conceive of the personality of Godhead residing within the body in the region of the heart and measuring only eight inches with four hands carrying lotus, wheel, conch, and club. No, Kachit. Kachit means. Uh, Prabhupada here says others, the usual meaning is, is some. So we could read it, some conceive of him this way. Who are the others other than what? Uh, so it seems that the others are the, those other than, than the materialists and other than those who are meditating on the universal form. We've heard about the universal form worshipers. Now there are others uh, who are, have progressed to the point of the super soul. Okay, we have two questions, one from Vijay Krishna and one from Atena. So let us hear one after another. Vijay Krishna from the Azores. Vijay Krishna, Vijay Krishna, Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, uh, um, in the very end of the translation, uh, I was trying for, for a question related to the previous verse, uh, verse 7, uh, yeah. uh, but you didn't hear me. 
um, it says at the very end of the translation, um, uh, the mass of people fallen in the river of suffering as the mm. consequence of accruing the result uh, of their own work. Yes. So my question is, uh, why is it that my, quote, own work, end quote, makes me suffer? Hmm. Because you're trying to do something independent. The, when our own work is directed toward satisfying Krishna, then there's no material reaction. But when, when my own work is done on my own behalf, then I have to accept the responsibility for the good and the goods and the bads of the work I've done. And then I have to suffer. Prabhupada gives the example that a soldier may kill so many men on the battlefield and he's, he's decorated actually, he's, he's praised. But when he goes back home and leaves the, the military, if he kills even one man, he's imprisoned or hanged. So why is that? When he was killing on the battlefield, he was doing so in the service of the government. But when he killed that one man, it was for his own personal interest. So as long as he was working for the government, the government was behind him. But when he's working on his own, he's on his own uh, responsibility. So also, because we don't know what we're doing, the, we're acting in ignorance, and ignorance is the source of suffering. Uh, we're acting in ignorance and passion, actually. Ignorance, we don't know what we're doing, and passion, we're ruled by material desires. And the result of this is suffering. If we act with detachment in knowledge, then the suffering is minimized. And when we act for the service of Krishna, then finished. Yes, Maharaj, thank you for your answer. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Atina, what's the story? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So, um, we know that when we think of Krishna at the time of death, he will bring us back to him. Um, I believe that was the last thing that you just mentioned before questions, which is he'll, he's always trying to bring us back to him. Um, I had heard well, that, for example, if one thinks of Srila Prabhupada at the end of death, uh, we will also go to Krishna because Srila Prabhupada is with Krishna. Now, is this concept the same, for example, for Christians who think of Jesus Christ at the end of uh, at the time of death because Jesus Christ, a son of God, Shaki Vish avatar, also with, I guess, some form of God, if they think of Jesus Christ, will also go to uh, God, uh, Vaikuntha, at the time of death. And I'm just curious if, if that is so, what exact planet is that? Um, I know Srila Prabhupada had mentioned that Jesus Christ had his own planet, but I'm not sure that, how does that make sense if he's only a Shaktivesha avatar um, and not God himself? Well, first there's the, the principle that by thinking of God's devotee, one is thinking of God. Just like if you think of Prabhupada, you can't think of Prabhupada independently. He's always connected with Krishna. If you think of, yes, he's always connected with Krishna. So by thinking of him, naturally you think of Krishna. So by thinking of Jesus, naturally one should be thinking of the Father, thinking of God. And so therefore one expects to be promoted to the kingdom of God. The Now that said, Sometimes Srila Prabhupada says that Jesus has descended from the spiritual sky or sometimes from the higher planets, like from the regions of the great sages. Uh, there seems to be some openness about that, that he may have descended from those higher planets, not Indra Loka or the places of heavenly enjoyment, but higher than that, where the great sages live. To, de to deliver Krishna consciousness. In which case we would expect in any case that the devotees would join him, uh, would join him. 
Um, beyond that, I don't have a lot, a lot to say. But the basic principle is there. But thinking of God, thinking of God's devotee. Well, um, may I ask that changes, I guess, a lot of the concept because we have believed that Christianity is a bona fide path. Um, well, well, definitely, definitely, because they're teaching God consciousness. But how could the destination not be Vaikuntha in the spiritual world and only in the higher planets if it's a bona fide Higher planets path? means you're on, you're on your way. The, not the higher planets like Indra Loka where they're enjoying and, and using up the results of their karma but the planets of the sages where they're making still further progress to God's kingdom. But that is in the material world. That's in the material world. Mm. Thank you. So, but I don't have a, you know, what would I say, a, a, a conclusive statement for you about that, either there or the spiritual world. Okay, but ultimately the idea is just think of God's devotees and you're heading in the right direction. Whether we know if it's in the higher planets in the material world or actually in Vaikuntha, where those are who think of Krishna's devotees or God's devotees are heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. And then just to check, could you say, as you mentioned, when you think of God's devotees, we ultimately think of God himself. So we will go when we think we will go towards god at the end of death but is it true that you could also uh, explain it as Srila Prabhupada is an associate of krishna he's always with krishna perhaps are you maybe a cowherd boy and because he's always with krishna when we think of Srila Prabhupada, we will join i guess in the pastures and ultimately we will be with krishna because Srila Prabhupada is with krishna is that correct yeah what even even the understanding is that before one is promoted to the spiritual world, one goes to where Krishna is performing his pastimes, someplace in material universes. You don't mind that, right? No, I understood we have to be retrained before we go back to Vikings. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just trying to think if there's anything else about that. No. Panchatattva says the previous verse mentions A, B, or C class prisoners, but it's a curious prison, isn't it? Most don't even know they're prisoners. Yes, exactly it. Then Vijay Krishna had another audio question. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Tell me. Uh, Maharaj, still related to uh, verse 7. At the very end of the purport, uh, I read, the Lord is impartial to all circumstances of the sufferings of the living entities, but to one who takes shelter at his lotus feet, the Lord gives proper protection, and he takes such a living entity back home, back to himself. So my yeah. question is, my question is, is it that the Lord is capable of taking me back home, back to himself, while I am still living in my material body? Because you don't want to go. We're missing no. the bus, essentially. Krishna. Maharaj, I think you didn't hear me well. My, my, uh, what do you think it is my question? I think your question wasn't so, so clear, actually. Um, the... Maharaj, Maharaj, I can make it clear. I need to know if the Lord is capable of uh, taking me back home, back to himself, while I am still living in the material world. Is he capable of doing that? Because, you, because he's capable, just like the, you know, the, the, the plane is capable of taking you to Los Angeles, but you haven't paid your ticket. No, no, Maharaj, he, no, Maharaj. It's not that, Maharaj. Is it that I can go back home, back to Godhead, while still living in my material body? Are you asking if you can go back to Godhead while still staying in your material body? 
Yes, is it that I can get spirit, spiritual freedom while still uh, engaged in my material body? You mean you want to be liberated immediately, like within the next five minutes? Uh, now that they say that a pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, he was here in a, well, he, his body was not material. Uh, but is it possible for a living entity living in a material body to be liberated while still living the material body? Yes. That, that, that is my question. That is my question. Manasagira. Anyone who's engaged in Krishna's service with body, mind, and words is already liberated, even yeah. while living in the material world. He doesn't have to go someplace else to be liberated. He's already liberated. But, but, but Maharaj, who, who is the one who makes this liberation? Is, is God, is the Lord. Right. Yes, that, that's my question. So the, the uh, uh, sorry, your question is not clear. That's my question. But what is your question? You my question know, is uh, that. Maharaj, my my question is: Is Krishna capable of freeing a a, a living entity from material bondage, but still uh, wanting him for maybe missionary purpose purposes? To 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 uh, to live in, in a material body. That's also possible. Notice, well, okay, yes, that's also possible. So so uh, so this idea that I I will only uh, achieve perfection after death is wrong. Perfection can be achieved while living in a material body yes and and this this perfection is offered to the living entity by the lord that's called devotional service if you're engaged in devotional service then you're a liberated person even in this material world fully engaged. yes yes that is the answer i need thank you very much okay got it thank you <laughs> yes Shall we move back to text eight? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, we shall. Kechit, some people, others, other than those who are focused on the universal form, Swadehantar, Kriya, Avakasha, Pradesha Matram, Purusham, Vasantam, Dharyana Smaranti. They meditate. Smaran means thinking, meditating. They're thinking of the super soul, dharanaya, uh, in the yoga system, uh, yam, niyam, asana, dhyan, dharana, dharana, fixing of the mind on the object of meditation. What is that object? He's purusham, the personality of Godhead. Svadeha anta hridya avakashe vasanta, residing within one's own body in the region of the heart, hridesha junatishtati, and pradesha matram, measuring only one pradesha. A pradesha is about eight inches. All right. Uh, but what does he look like? Chaturbhujam. He has four arms, kanja, one hand, a lotus, ratanga, another, a chariot wheel or a disc, shanka, kanchel, and gada, a club. Shanka chakra gada, a padma, dharam, dharam means holding. Then, this is the this is the picture, and this will be sketched out for us further. He's all pervading, but he lives as the Paramatma in the heart of every living being, Ishra Sarvabhutana, Hridde Sarjanatishtati, and eight inches in size, and the distance between, yes, the uh, thumb and the first finger, about eight inches. 
And these, as explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita, these forms of Vishnu hold these four symbols in different order. For some, it's Shankachak, one form is Shankachakra Gada Padma, another is Padma Gada Shankar Chakra, another is Chakra Shanka Padma Gada, starting from, I forget where it was, the lower left or something, and going clockwise. Uh, you calculate uh, all these different forms. So it comes to 24. I haven't done the, the mathematics here, but there are 24 different forms according to the way the, the, the different placement of these four items. And the one being described here is called Janardana, or the plenary portion who controls the general mass of people. Jana means the people. And Ardana, he's controlling them. In Vaikuntha, you'll find these 24 forms in the spiritual sky. And although there are many, many, they're all Advaita, they're all non different from one, one another. And they're all eternally young. That's another feature of the Lord in the heart. He's of a youthful appearance. Any questions so far on this? Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, write it down, please. It takes too long for- Maharaj, to... uh, I can make it very quickly, please. Good, then write it, make it quick and write it down. Uh, okay. Maharaj, I had a question. <clears throat> Yes. Um, I was under the impression whenever the Lord is referred to as Rathangapani uh, that he's holding the Ratha Anga or the chariot wheel, the part of the, the limb of the chariot. I was under the impression that refers back to his Leela of lifting the chariot wheel to attack Bhishma. Bhishma did. So I uh, just wondering if it's if it's always that, or in this case, it seems like it, it's an interchangeable with the, the standard uh, chakra that he holds on his finger. Yeah, it seems to me that way. I don't see, I didn't see any mention in the commentary about Bhishma or um, Krishna's Kurukshetra Leela. It seems to be the Sudarshan chakra. Right, but it's an interesting choice of word, and even the way Prabhupada translates it, the wheel of a chariot. And this is not the only place in the Bhagavatam that the Lord is referred to as Rathangapani or someone who holds Yeah, it. well, we could look and see what what else we turn up about Rathangapani. Um, Rathanga... I think the first canto of Rathangapani is also. Yeah. Yeah, Krishna is known as Ratangapani, who carries the chariot wheel in his hands. Then there's 10th Canto. He's also called Ratangapani. 11th Canto, 12th Canto. Yeah. I don't see anyone who wants to shed further light on this doing the research. Mark, do you have the reference in the 11th canto? I can maybe I can look that up or like the verse. Reference in the 11th canto, yes. Ritangapane. With the, uh, no, we have the same. There it is. Um, there is a reference to Bhishma Dev there. Yeah, okay. But it's not elaborated unless I see it elaborated here. Um, long purport, but I don't see further discussion about it. Well, there's a, there is a wheel in his hand and someone can provide further information about this Ratangapani name, that would be great. 
But yes, rata anga, part of a of a rut. Which part? The wheel. Right. Um, there's a question on the chat by Rasa Prabhu. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. As we know, devotee association is very important and a valuable aspect of the process of devotional service. Some devotees think physical association is more important than virtual association. I disagree with this notion. Can you comment, please? Well, ultimately, virtual association is association by sound, like we're so, as we're associating with Krishna through the sound of Bhagavad Gita or with the past charges, even uh, though they're not physically present. So Vani, that vibration is more important than the physical association. So here we're, we're associating with one another on the internet by sound. And that's the essential association. But there's also benefit to getting together. And that is only partly served by Zoom and so on. For example, devotees get together and dadati pratigrinati punkte bojayate chaiva. They distribute prasadam, they exchange prasadam. I give you some, you give me some. The Zoom developers still haven't figured that one out yet. Where I've put in a bug report and asked them to uh, add that to the feature list, but so far they're uh, they don't seem to have made it a priority, although it's a priority for us. So there are certain aspects of association that are unavailable uh, in this virtual space, but. So much is available. We're benefiting all over the world. Devotees are really happy about the association that they're getting online that they weren't even getting when physical association was more abundant. So you're entitled to think the way you're thinking. And if they think physical association is more important, they're missing physical association. All right. But we finally put more emphasis on sound. Is that all right? Now, Vijay Krishna says, the succinct question, very good. We worshipers of Lord Chaitanya go to Vrindavan. Whom do we need to worship to go to Vaikuntha? The, yes, virtual person. The, whom do we need to worship? Generally, those who go to Vaikuntha are the worshipers of Narayan, Krishna in his majestic feature as the king of kings, as the, the all opulent supreme lord of all. They go to Vaikuntha to worship the Lord with great awe and reverence. And the followers of Lord Chaitanya who are more interested in spontaneous love for Krishna with less emphasis on, without caring that much in the ultimate end for rules and regulations, ultimately wanting to follow the rules and regulations only for the purpose of developing that pure spontaneous love, they go to Vrindavan. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah, yes, wonderful answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Prasanna Vaktram Nalina Ayatekshanam Kadamba Kinjalka Pishanga Vasanam The Sun Maha Ratna Hiranmayangadam Spuran Maha Ratna Kirita Kundalam. Now these verses are going to be very beautiful, actually. They all are going to describe in, in detail the attractive features of the Paramatma. The, 
this is the nature of Krishna and his different features, that just by hearing about them, that one becomes attractive because Krishna has all opulences. Here, especially his opulence of beauty is evident. Prasanna Vakram, his mouth expresses happiness. Prasanna is satisfied, uh, happy mouth. Nalina Ayata Ayata and his eyes, Ikshanam, are spread like lotus flowers, blooming eyes like lotus flowers. Um, what is that? Venum Kanvantam Adabinda Dalayataksham. His eyes are like lotus petals, lotus petal eyes. And Kadamba Kinjalka Pishanga Vasanam. And his garments are yellow, saffron colored, like the lotus, uh, like the Kadamba flower. The Kadamba is a yellow flower found in Vrindavan. Lasat Maharatna Hiranmatya Angadam. And he's wearing valuable ornaments. Hiranmaya made of gold and Maharatna with the most valuable jewels. Angadam, uh, these are his ornaments. Of course, yes, these are his ornaments. Spuran, Maharatna Kirita Kundalam. And he wears a glowing mukut, a glowing uh, helmet, Kirita and earrings, kundalam, again, maharatna with uh, jewels. So gorgeous the Paramatma is. So as the yogi in the previous, or the meditator in the previous chapter was being advised that think of all these grand material manifestations as part of a universal being, a universal person. Here the, the yogi goes beyond that and he fixes his mind on the transcendental personality of Godhead. In the previous chapter, the, the oceans are his waist, the mountains are his bones, the clouds are his hair and so on. But here, we see the transcendental limbs of the Lord with his particular ornaments and his facial and bodily features, the, the color of his garments, the his expression of his eyes, everything is described. And this one can meditate on and meditate on. Klesho dikataras te sham avyakta sakta chetasa. Those who want to meditate on something impersonal are going to have a hard time because just try to fix your mind on, on something that has no form, no qualities, no pastimes, no name, no nothing. That will be uh, so much trouble. But here to think about the, this beautiful form with these gold and bejeweled ornaments with a four arms and yellow, bright yellow saffron dress and other features that will be described and his happy and beautiful face. This is really something to think about. Then Yes. Vijay Krishna says, God is detached. Why so many decorations? Doesn't make sense. He's detached. Uh, why not? Detached from this material world. The <laughs> detached means for us because we're 
we need to be detached from all these things that we thinking are belong to us. Krishna's, he does, these are his natural features. It's not that Krishna as a matter of renunciation has to give up his smile or give up his lotus eyes or give up his yellow garment. These are all spiritual features of the Lord. He can give them up. He, when Krishna, he can have them, he can take them or leave them. That's detachment. He can take them or he can leave them. Just like Prabhupada, he could live in gorgeous quarters in Juhu, or he could live in a hut in Bhubaneshwar. That's detachment. Not that I can only live in a hut. That was actually Sudama Brahman's little tiny fault that he was attached to being poor. He was attached to being poor. So Krishna, he's totally detached. He doesn't, he can be rich or he can be uh, appear poor. So as the Narayan, he has all this gorgeous paraphernalia and as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he just wears simple uh, cloth of a sannyasi. So this is Krishna. He can be completely detached or he can have everything for him, it's the same. All right? Yes, all right. Wonderful answer. Okay. <laughs> Maharaj Venkatesh Prabhu has a question. Venkatesh has a question. Right. Okay, up. let's see. We have a little bit about the, an update on the, the wheel in the hand of the Lord. This is third canto. The wheel in the hand of the Lord called the Sudarshan Chakra has 1,000 spokes. The yogi is advised to meditate upon each one. He should meditate on every one of the component parts of the transcendental form of the Lord. Lord Kapiladev's instructions. And then in 106640, Madhupati reports, Ratangapani refers to one also refers to one who holds the Sudarshan disk. So good, I'm not wrong. Thank you, Madhupati. And elsewhere, Panchatattva reports, the Sudarshan chakra is described as shaped like a, a wheel. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, what was that question? Um, it's it's in the chat just after that. Uh, the translation. Okay, I have to scroll up. In other words. Yeah, you have to scroll up. Yeah. Venkatesh. Okay. I'm thinking of my body and also thinking about my consciousness. My body has a form, but my consciousness doesn't seem to have a form. But Bhagavatam, Muktir Hitvanyata Rupam, Swarupena Vyavastati, liberated soul has a form. Wish to strengthen faith that soul has a form. What has Prabhupada said about this? Yes, consciousness is, seems formless because we're, our vision is not developed. But consciousness has form. Consciousness is not less than matter, it's more. Krishna is pure consciousness. He has a form. It's not that because Krishna, you know, what is, there's two things. There's consciousness and matter. Consciousness is superior, matter is inferior. So in the inferior there's form, but it's an inferior form. It's a form made of you know, blood and guts and all, all that kind of stuff. And it, it finally rots. But then we get the spiritual form of Krishna where there's no matter. It's all pure consciousness. Satchitananda Vigraha. Chit Vigraha. It's the eternal uh, form of blissful knowledge. So consciousness ultimately has form. Krishna has form. Then where, as they say, chips off the old block, where little parts of Krishna, 
we also have form. But now that spiritual form, which is our natural form, is covered by this material body. And therefore, we, when we think of consciousness, we think of something vague or general, because we're not so pure that we've come to realize our eternal identity. We're just being introduced to the idea that we're eternal servants. And we're trying to, as they say, wrap our heads around or grasp, understand that. But the advanced devotees, they'll understand what is their eternal form, what is their eternal uh, service. The Prakrita Sahajas, they right away tell you, oh, you're a gopi and you're 10 years old and your service is to supply betel nuts which Radharani gives to Krishna and your dress is, is yellow with green trim and all of that. And wow, 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 wow. But meanwhile, we're still identifying with this material body. But our process is to go step by step, step by step. Our eternal identity is that we're servants of Krishna. And then how we're eternal servants of Krishna what our eternal form will be for serving Krishna, that will be revealed in the future. But Prabhupada explains, because right now we're 10,000th, one ten thousandth the tip of a hair. Well, that's not much of a form. That's pretty, you know, it's like an insect form or something, you know, so tiny, a microbe form. That's so, so small that you, but Prabhupada explains that in the spiritual sky, that spark of consciousness expands in terms of the material energy. Here, we're in the material world, and I'm 10, 000, one ten thousandth the, the tip of a hair, and five foot eight and a half. So, and then 120 pounds or so. Not much to talk about, but anyway, the, that's, how has that happened? That's happened by expansion of the material energy. The, Spirit soul has identified itself with matter and expanded into a form which is not uh, microscopic, so many angstrom units, but which is five foot, whatever it is these days. So by expanding ourselves, extending ourselves in terms of the material energy, we have this form as an American, as a Indian, as a man, as a woman, as a this, as a that. Now, when you go to the spiritual world, you're still ten to one ten thousandth the tip of a hair, but you expand yourself again, this time in terms of the spiritual energy. There is no material energy there. So as we've grown this body, as it were, or as we've manifested this body, which is different from our soul, in the spiritual world, you get a body which is not different from your soul, which is Krishna's nature, madbhavam. What is that? Puta madbhavam agata. They uh, attain my nature. Uh, so what is that nature of Krishna? For Krishna, there's no difference between body and soul. What is that? Dehi deha vibedo yam. Vidyate Neshre Kuchit. For the Supreme Ishra, uh, Bedi, uh, Beda Bede, uh, Deha Dehi Vibedo Yam. The difference between body and soul never exists. Prabhupada had us add this line to a Bhagavad Gita purport just to stick it in the eye of one particular commentator who had the nerve to say that when Krishna says, think of me, we're supposed to think of the unborn, unmanifest within Krishna. So Prabhupada had us insert this quotation from the Puranas, I forget whether it's Kurma Purana or someplace else, that Dehi Deha Vibhed, the difference between the Deha, the body, and the Dehi, the person who has the body, um, 
ayam neshre uh, na ishre in the supreme personality of godhead na uh, quichit at any time says this distinction exists angani uh, asya sakalendriya vritivanti is there's no difference between his krishna and his arms and his legs and his hands and his eyes or even his flute or his dress krishna's everything's expanded on the spiritual platform the absolute platform here everything is duality i'm different from my body i'm different from so many everything but spiritually you get a body which is not different from you not different from you a blissful eternal body i hope that answers your question venkatesh okay we have 5 minutes left we can we can take another question to sipriya has one So see Priya has another question. Okay, I see four new messages down there. All right, let's see. She has uh, her hand raised. It's an audio question. There's uh okay, let's see what's going on here. Wow. So see Priya has a question, Atina has a question. Manan Gopal found that quotation it was Kurma Purana okay it may be controversial reform or formless of atma based on bhagavat sandarva by jiva goswami is it okay to ask it's okay to ask but i don't think we'll fit that in 5 minutes so let me vijay krishna says i found a way of removing the super soul from the heart are you interested the most people have found a way to remove the super soul from the heart <laughs> you just concentrate just put your mind elsewhere and he's gone as far as they're concerned he's yeah. there he's there but because their realization is not there so they you can say removed the super soul from the heart he, he's still there but they've removed him um uh, uh, maharaj you need to hear this from me please i don't think i do uh, because time is short yes and, i know i'm sorry and, and you asked if i was interested in removing him from the heart no i'm interested in getting him back so <laughs> if you have some is the pure soul in the spiritual world able to act with interchangeable senses yobanat anand asks yes 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 because it's the the senses are spiritual so they can do the the brajbasis can do everything like the desire trees they're able to grow anything you you want a a plum you want a mango you want a palace you want whatever you want you can take it from this tree because the trees have that spiritual elasticity you could say or that uh, dexterity probably sometimes use that word in an interesting way they have that that power that they can do anything with any any of their senses so the devotees also their their nature is like that Venkatesh says as material elements can take form the higher soul can definitely take a form yes not formless okay since we're 2 minutes of yeah there's still to see two minutes from the end here i'm tempted to take a controversial question question regarding form and formlessness based on bhagavad sandarbha but i think that will probably take us past our limit right mr gopal yeah uh, it sounds like a long one uh, 
I don't know how long is Tulsi Priya's question. Maybe that might be a couple minutes. Oh, right. That's an audio question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Thank you. My question is, um, with these different descriptions that you were mentioning of the Lord's form, and somebody else quoted meditating on each of the thousand spokes of the, of the chakra, um, all those things seem to be a um, full-time, lifetime project. And my question is, is that most of us are struggling to, uh, you know, deal with the, the, the necessities of life, and then we also get distracted by things that are not necessities. And so, um, and then there, there seems to be, at least in, in the social sense, that there are things that need to be addressed, you know, that are not necessarily pertaining to ourselves um, in terms of social needs and issues and things like that. But my question is, is, is if a person, does a person either need to be a pure devotee who is completely dedicated, meditating on the Lord and doing service to the Lord in order to neglect these other issues that go beyond mere survival? Or is it enough to simply be attempting to become a, a completely surrendered soul? In other words, do we, is there a balance or is there an obligation well, okay, this is going to not be the shortest of questions either. But first, let's take the immediate context of meditation on the super soul. This is for the yogis. And they're not going to do anything else. They're going to sit down and they're going to focus their minds, as everybody used to know how to do thousands of years ago. They're going to focus their minds on the super soul. And notice, by the way, how much better this is than form is emptiness, emptiness is form meditating on the sum, you know, oh, mo, mo. they get to sit there and meditate on this like gorgeous, this gorgeous form, glowing and, and beautiful and smiling with, with happiness and, and benedictory nature. This is what they, uh, what they get to focus on. How blissful to, to be focused in that way instead of like roaming around and trying to somehow or other uh, form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Uh, so this is for the yogis. That's the first thing. For us to do that is not really in the picture in Kali Yuga. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Keva. Kalo Nasjeva, 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 Katira Mita. So that's the first thing. Our process is different. Our process is Hare Nama. Then how do we go about everything and, and manage our meditative life and our practical life and all of that? That becomes more than a two minute question, of course, but the Acharyas are showing us how to do that. Prabhupada himself had said, quipped sometimes, that Bhagavatam in the morning, banking in the afternoon. So we have to do everything what is that? Mamanu Smita Yujacha. Krishna told Arjun, think of me and fight. That's the art. Think of me and fight. So do everything, but be Krishna conscious. And what is the key to that? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Kirtaniya Sada Hare. And with that, it's time for Madan Gopal Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much, dear devotees, for the nice questions and the wonderful dynamic exchange. So we'll do the, the regular announcements for the upcoming speakers and so on. So Van Press Adventure tomorrow at 7 to 8 on this Zoom link that can be found on Maharaj's website. You can also just look it up on Facebook if you type in the Vanapras Adventure. There's not that many Vanapras Adventures out there on Facebook. This is really the only one. Um, and you can find the link on Maharaj's website, jswami.info, under the About menu item there. So there it is right there, Vanapras Adventure. Of, of course, our temple is coming up very nicely. I went to the site this morning as well, and they've done a lot more work. Um, on the excavation. So things, when they start, they, they move really quickly. So it's very exciting. 
Um, and then on Saturday mornings, we have Sachinandan Swami Maharaj. Uh, we have three more sessions remaining, so be sure to join that. You can look that up on Facebook for that link on his uh, for his uh, Zoom sessions. Uh, very enlivening. Uh, and it's organized by Bhakti Center and our temple, Tuaco, Central New Jersey and New York and Gita Nagri Farm. Don't miss that. And this week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays with Jadwit Swami Maharaj, of course. Uh, on Thursday, we have spe a special speaker. Um, she's the mother of the famous Mayapuri, Vishwambar Prabhu. So if you come five minutes earlier at 7.55, uh, you'll be in for a special treat. Vishwambar Prabhu will be leading some kirtan for a few minutes. And then uh, there'll be a special surprise. And, uh, and then a presentation by Ananga Manjari Mataji. And on Sunday evening, we have Radhika Raman Prabhu, also a very popular speaker, very much in demand. And on Saturdays, uh, we no longer have programs, uh, at least on this channel. So feel free to join uh, any or all of these. Your participation is very much appreciated. And we look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much. I'd like to request, uh, uh, I think if uh, Neil Mani Prabhu, I don't know if he's here, if he's not, oh, actually... Uh, Let's see, Radharani Mataji, if Nilmani Prabhu is here, he can, uh, there she, there he is, he can uh, close it up. Go ahead. <coughs> Hare Krishna, thank you so much. I'm uh, guilty tonight, I was not able to hear most of the class because of some other things I had to do, but I heard the ending of the class and uh, thank you Maharaj for a, a nice class. I heard it was a very, very lively discussion. You got the mantra, right? That's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Anyone? Actually, my, we were delivering a new lawnmower to Tawako Temple. That's why we got there. Wow. So, <laughs> thank you. Anyway, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, all the devotees. Thank you, Madan Gopal. Thank you, Nilmani Prabhu. Hare Krishna. And Nilmani Prabhu has also been very busy with the new temple, uh, you know, dealing with the nitty-gritty part of it. So he has a lot of things on his plate that he's juggling, but he always makes a point to connect. Thank you, Neil Prabhu, and thank you, dear devotees. If you like, uh, you may unmute yourself, say a quick uh, a greeting to Maharaj, and good night. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Pancha Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Yogananda. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Radha Rani. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, thank you for the lecture. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. Hare. 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 Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Dandavat Param Maharaj. Ah, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj Ji, for the lecture. Thank you.